sure you've seen all of the information about the price of film. Is film getting too expensive? Would you switch to digital because of the prices? The price of film is getting out of control. The biggest argument going against film is that it's expensive. So I'm sure you've seen all over the internet on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or threads or X or Twitter, whatever it's called now, that people are talking about the film prices, talking about moving away from film, talking about implementing some kind of digital and film hybrid shooting solution. That all makes sense. Film is expensive. It's expensive to buy. It's expensive to get processed. It's expensive to get scanned. In this video, we're going to go around asking what people's relationship with film and film photography is if they're still shooting it if they plan on moving away from it and how is that different from last year let's figure it out let's go uh, ask the people Wale what is your current relationship with film photography me and film photography don't really have a relationship right now but I'm trying to get into it I, I've, I all I can hear is how expensive it's been to consistently develop um, but I'm right now I'm looking for a Fed 3 Russian Leica clone camera. Once I get my hand on one of those, I think me and film might have a pretty good relationship. So you're so you're looking to get into film whereas what if like the prices go up in the next like 5 months or so? I mean, that's why I have a job. <laughs> so, you know, I'm going to keep working to be able to afford what I love to do. All right, thank you, man. Appreciate it. No problem. No problem. Hey, Willie, Willie, just pulled up. Willie, what's your current relationship with film? <laughs> it's like that girl I wish I never dated. <laughs> uh, that girl that kind of rang me out of my pockets for dinner. That girl that fucked like an animal, but just never answered my DMs in time. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't have one right now with her. Kind of wiped up by digital. It's okay. It's all right. It's a new what, world. What camera are you shooting with these days? Uh, like a M10P. And then, so how has your relationship with film now changed in the past year? So the thing with film is that, like, after a while, like, it's just hard to go and find the time to develop it. You know, like, make the time, and that's the one thing that I don't have enough of. I'd love to shoot film all day. I mean, forget the prices. The prices alone, we already know. And then it's not just the prices of the film, the prices of developing, but then you got to get on the bus, you got to go find a place, or you could develop at home, make a mess, and take some time there. And that's cool. I did it for years. It's just like, at this point, my time's limited, so I just want to make my photos and edit them. That's it. We got Vinny here. Vinny, what is your current relationship with film? That's a great question, bro. I had a Leica M7. I had an M240. I was shooting both concurrently. And my problem is I ripped way too many fucking rolls. I went up to Boston and my M7 decided to shred every roll at about the 15th frame and I didn't know. So I would get through the roll, go to unwind it, and the entire roll would be spooled up at the end of my fucking receiver. Once my M240 started having problems, I just sold both and I bought a M10P. So without access to a lab like I had in college, like. If I had a lab, I would do it every day of my life. But because I don't have easy access to it and I have to travel so far to do it, there's a lot of time invested and I just don't have it. So from this point on, do you think you're completely over film or do you think you'll get back into it? You know, I, I'm not over it. I do want to shoot black and white more. I had a film camera in college that I thought I had. So, so I want to shoot more and I sold the camera with the anticipation that I had a cheap little, I think it was like a... Minota 7.2. It's like a rangefinder fixed focal length 40 millimeter. And I think I might just buy one of those again for like 150 bucks. Thank you. No problem. John, what's your relationship with film photography? I have none. Ha well, when did you stop shooting film? I never shot film. The only film I shot was 4x5, and that's, totally, that's a different. Like for street, I never shot. And you're shooting, and the camera you're using now is? A Fuji X100. Cool, thank you. Appreciate it. Camilo, over here shooting with the, the Fuji GFX. Camilo, what's what's your current relationship with film these days? Nil. Currently, no film. Uh, purely, purely digital. And I do not touch film right now. Not even my archive. <laughs> and how has that changed in the last year? Last year was 100, I mean, up until three months, three or four months ago, 100% film, all analog, unless it was a job that required some digital. 
but my street work was 100% film, scanned everything, I retouched everything. Well, what happened was my Mamiya 7 broke for the third time, and I'm just over it. I'm just over fixing it, there's no parts. Uh, and now I got the Mamiya 4. Had this sitting around for like a year. I bought it for like commercial use, and I just kind of like naturally just jumped on this. I had the 50 pancake on it, a little too tight. Once I got the 30 millimeter, it changed my whole entire life, basically. I, I reconnected with with photography and I was I'm out a lot more. I think I think that analog was really kind of holding me back in a way, which is crazy. But I think it's also like a money thing and but not not even that. I think it was really like I, I hate scanning. If somebody wants to scan for me, uh, maybe I'll jump back. But for now, it's it's this. I don't even think about analog. So it's uh, it's a total 180. It's kind of just the other direction. I haven't really noticed any. It's I mean, it looks basically the same to me. So uh, just a lot less hassle. So that's it. Yo, uh, we got we got Dustin and Mark here. Uh, we're all we're all the same height. I mean, you can tell all three of us. Um, <laughs> Mark, what is your current relationship with film photography? Ooh, it's a love hate relationship. It used to be a work relationship, and now it's kind of turned into like a more of a passion project. Don't really shoot it much for work anymore, and now just kind of what I do for what I want to do to have fun. And yeah, that's why I shoot film, just for me. Is that because of the prices? No, it really has nothing to do with the prices, more the process. I uh, enjoy the color, just like the shooting experience, and it slows you down a bit. Um, the cameras are cool, they're fun, get a little nerdy about them, yeah. Is, if they rise, raise prices again, will that further push you into digital, or, or is there a breaking point that'll make you stop? I'm already doing a little bit of digital, uh, so I'm already shooting digital, but the prices suck. I mean, as once they get over, I don't even want to say a number, but <laughs> yeah. for now, it's it's all right. But if it ever turns into an issue, I mean, I will just go all digital, yeah. I think. I won't even do black and white. I'll just go digital color. I feel you. I'm with you. Dustin, what is your relationship with film photography? <laughs> Polyamorous. No, I uh, mostly film uh shooter but i did buy a digital camera recently i got a gfx uh but that's more for like slower personal projects uh tra travel photography and stuff like that for street um <laughs> for street it's it's film for me uh i don't i flirted with it i've tried and i just keep coming back to this so i think i have to just stick with it it's it's what works for me. It's not even like, it's not even like, it slows me down or whatever, which is true. It's just, I don't know. I have a catalog built up and I want to keep that catalog going. I think there's something about seeing the binders fill up. Yeah. That's like really rewarding. Uh, yeah. But film prices, they suck. Uh, I hope it doesn't slow me down. I probably would switch to black and white. I've already been flirting with that idea. So I don't know, we'll see. And for the record, what film, what what digital camera were you using to kind of, were you playing with, flirting with when you were doing that? Uh, I flirted with the GFX with like a manual lens, like a Leica lens. Uh, I had a Ricoh GR. Uh, I mean, I've owned a, an M10. I've I've tried a lot of different cameras, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, I've stuck with with this. Cool. Thank you, Mariano. What is your current relationship with film photography? Right now at the moment, it's not that healthy. I have a lot of film backed up from a few years ago. And well, now that it's gotten very expensive, it's like, there's like no fucking way I'm gonna be spending money on film. It's just too much money. And at the end of the day, it, I don't think it matters if you shoot film or, or digital. It's, you know, it's, it's all preference too. But, uh, but yeah, no, no relationship with film at the moment. But I've been, I've been shooting here and there, but not, not that often. Well, what are you shooting with these days? Uh, with the 262, Leica 262. Uh, I've been shooting with it for since 2017, 2018 maybe. Um, yeah, so it's been, it's been a little while and it's a great camera. 
obviously at uh, low light situations is pretty crappy because it's from like 2014, 2015, but it's a great camera. And then, so is, is that around the time when you switched to that camera, when you kind of stopped shooting film? No, so I got, I got this body for work and then it just became my daily camera. And, uh, and little by little, I just started taking this out more often. And then eventually I, started, I put down the film camera and then 2020 happened. I shot with film a little more, and 2021, 2022, that's when film prices fucking skyrocketed, and I was like, that, no way. Like, there's no way I'm paying for that. And then, just so everybody knows, how much undeveloped film do you have, actually? Oh my god. Uh, I, have, I haven't counted, but... I don't, I don't know, dude, maybe like 60-something? No, uh, maybe like between 60 and 80 rolls, maybe 100 rolls? Uh, and I keep adding more rolls to the fucking badge, but I've been developing though, which is which is awesome. So I'm catching up, but very slowly. Yeah. yeah. All right, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thank you. And if you have film that you need to get developed, look no further. Send your film to Gelatin Labs. They are a family-run business in New Jersey. They specialize in mail-in orders, so you can ship them your film no matter where you are in the country. If you're in the New York City area, they do have drop boxes, so look those up. They have some in the city, and they have some outside of the city as well. Go show them some love. Hit that link in the description below. Gelatin Labs. Back to the video. We got Oscar here. Oscar, what is your current relationship with film photography? Uh, it's a love and hate relationship. I love it because the photos come out how I like them. The film is cool, but the price of film is rising so much that I just feel like I might go to digital soon at one point. I think maybe by early next year, if things keep going the way they are, I, I will go to digital. I mean, I have no other choice. Mm. Or I will go half and half. I love it, but I just, don't know if I want to pay the prices if they keep going the way they are. Yeah. I don't know if that's a fair answer, but I think that's what a lot of people are doing, you know? I mean, I see a lot of photographers who used to shoot film are switching to digital, like, because it's not cheap. And street photography, one roll, if you get two keepers, you, you're in, you did good. So what are you gonna do, you know? Like, keep yeah. shooting and, you know? Yeah. What uh? Is there a camera that you're eyeing when you when you switch to digital or go yeah, go hybrid? I, I would do the uh, Fuji. I think Fuji like uh, Expo Three or the F One Hundred F. I think it's the closest to what I like the look of film. And I think that's uh, if I was to buy one, it would be One Hundred F or Expo Three. Mm. But I'm hoping it doesn't get to the point. First, I would shoot black black and white. In think I will buy a, a digital camera, and that's it. Cool. I think that's it. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, Paulie. Yep. All right, we got Boris here. Ran into Boris here in Central Park. Boris, what is your current relationship with film and film photography? That's just the medium that I work in right now, and I plan to do so for the foreseeable future. No plans to change it up. Uh, shoot black and white, so it's pretty affordable compared to you portray 800 people, but, you know, and then just keep it going. How, how has that changed, if at all, in the past year? Uh, it hasn't changed in the past year really at all. Um, I try to just shoot intentionally, not like hold back or, any, or anything like that, but I just do what I gotta do and I'll uh, figure it out later financially, but it's really not too bad for me. I don't shoot crazy amounts. So nothing's changed in the past year. I'm just gonna keep on keeping on. So with the inevitable price increase, which has been happening for the past, you know, four, five years in film, do you think there's a breaking point that will push you over the edge to kind of reconsider and maybe go hybrid digital or digital at all? Um, it'd have to get like really ridiculous for me to even consider that. Um, I'm really happy with the, the way I work now and the way my workflow is now and the way my photos look now. Um, so it would be like a lot to get me to change. Um, so I don't think I'm gonna change for years if, if ever, hopefully never. <laughs> Great, thank you, Boris. No problem. I'll see you around. We got Ruben here. 
We just finished filming a different episode, but in this video, we're asking Ruben, what is your current relationship with film? Film is really annoying to me right now because I'm working on this uh, book edit and there's only two pictures in the current version of that edit that were shot on film from a long time ago when that was primarily what I shot on. And, um, and back then I was very bad at organization and storage. And so for me to find the, the two negatives of those two photos is gonna be a gargantuan task potentially. Like on the one hand, it's really sweet to think that I have these like physical originals of these pictures that I love. And that's, there's something really sweet about that. But at the same time, like almost any other picture of mine that I need to look for, I can find it in like a matter of a minute or two yeah. at worst. And digging through my bins of negatives is gonna be a chore. Yeah. I get asked about it a lot, you know, trying to bring my own very agnostic view into it is, is tricky because for some people, like the process of it is so valuable to them. You know, they, they don't really know how to feel the same thing for their photos if they're not engaged in developing their own film and, you know, looking at negs with a loop and printing and, you know, on a, in a dark, wet dark room and all that. And that was never so uh, integrally part of my process that I became permanently attached to it. So I'm very free of that, which is great. So you've been shooting digital for a, for a good amount of time now. There's no real future for you in terms of adopting film as your primary source of photo making. Primary? I highly doubt it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I might fool with it again sometime for like a limited purpose or limited time, uh, but I cannot imagine ever going back to it full time. Yeah. Absolutely not. And f the biggest reason of all being nothing to do with money or time or any of that, but just like no longer being in the, the, all the dilemmas about it is so great. The only thing that ever triggers my insecurity about that is if I'm at home looking at my favorite photo books, because like if I chose my top 10 photo books in history, all of them were shot on film. And so if you allow yourself, you can start to feel like, oh, should I be doing that if I wanna live up to what I, you know, have, uh, schooled myself with, but uh, I live here in the now, in the 21st century, and I'm me making my work. I have to do what f works for me. Yeah. So I can't let what ha was done in 1957 or 1977 uh, have that much bearing on what I'm doing now. It's just, I just can't. All right, we got Cody here. Cody, what is your current relationship with film and film photography? Current relationship with film and film photography for me hasn't changed much, even though my bank account is now a bit uh, not as high as it used to be since the price changes, but my relationship with it remains the same, remains strong. Uh, I feel like it's, for me, really the only way I like to work in the street is, is on film. There's probably gonna be another price increase at the end of the year. At what point does that start to change for you? Like your situation? I don't know if it will. I'll just have to hustle a little harder. That's wow. all. Yeah, I respect it. Hey, we got Alex. Alex, what's up? Alex, How? what's your relationship? You shoot with a Roly, that's a Roly. That's a big film guy. Yeah. Uh, what is, what's your current relationship with film? I think I was shooting digital a lot earlier the, in the year uh, and I think I just started working with like what what kind of digital photo resonates with me and like how is that as a medium how is it different and how is it similar especially when I was shooting uh, like digital full frame like how is that similar to 35 um, so I think I spent a lot of time with that and I found a lot of photos that like just read differently on digital versus film and like some things I like better some things that I didn't but obviously I you know I, I keep coming back to film do you feel like it's going to be more of a hybrid solution moving forward because of any of the macroeconomic factors going on if I was very set on the kind of photo I was making or very set within a specific style that I was working in 
then I would feel drawn to commit to only doing film, maybe. But I also think that there's a lot of cases, especially like for like live music and stuff like that, where I really liked a lot of the digital photos I've taken uh, for the first half of the year, um, more so in a lot of situations than I would have if they were on 35 or something like that. I, I think it really just depends on the, on the project and the situation. Yeah, we got Sean and Andrew here. Guys, what's your current relationship with film photography? Oh, I'm all in. I'm uh, I'm way too deep to. I I just accept my fate now, with the dark room and and yeah, I'm I'm just fucked. No, and there's no chance of you going digital, unless like Kodak's plant burns down, um, or film is like a hundred dollars a roll. Yeah, I'm just I'm just eating it. All right, Andrew. Uh, I got a GR3 because I saw Dustin using it and then I saw Aaron using it and then I saw Paul using it and I was like, okay, it has, has to be good enough and on this trip so far it's not. So I'm, <laughs> I'm shooting with the G2, uh, so this is for sale if anyone wants it. Thanks. I, I tried. I mean, I tried. Film is like, yeah, I'm trying to shoot less, be more selective, but I, it's not happening. So Is that an economic choice? It is, yeah. But the thing is, sometimes when I'm more selective, you don't get the shots that you normally would if like you're just shooting whatever's instinctual. So I'm figuring it out. Yeah. What is the price point that you'll just say, fuck it, I'm going digital? Um, like fully, like if it's Canadian dollars, if it's like 35 a roll, which I guess would be like 30 or 28 US, it goes up past 35, yeah, I'm out. I'm out, yeah. All right, thank you, boys. Yeah. Yo, we got Saul here. Yo, what's going on? How you doing? Saul's been hitting the gym. Saul, what what is your current relationship with film photography? Uh, it's expensive, and I'm thinking about buying the Rico. Maybe I don't know. Wow. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah. you think about going hybrid because of the cost of it? Because of the cost of it, for sure. Yeah. I mean, the lab's giving me a little discount, and I bought a ton before the price went up. I've got like boxes and boxes of it, but every time I take a photo of film, a little part of me kind of dies. So I don't know, we'll see. Yeah. So how was that change in the, like a year ago? How, what was your mindset? A year ago, I mean, there was a few days I would go out and shoot like four rolls a day and I wouldn't even bat an eye. And then now I'm kind of like, uh, we were just calling them Ricos, like shots that are like, okay, it's kind of mid, like maybe just, you know, digi it. Um, yeah, man, a year ago I was ripping through film. It was a different year, yeah. I'm always gonna have this and I'm always gonna use this. I think I'm just being a little bit more selective. Whereas like last year I was just kind of ripping at it. But the, he's the one who's got me into the I'm selling this. Do you want to? <laughs> on camera. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you a good deal. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Saul. Yeah, of course. My pleasure. Thank you, Bolly. Sure. Yo, we got uh, Scotty yep. and Conway. This is the Asian section. <laughs> Yo, okay. Guys, what is your current relationship with film photography? It's... I love it still, for sure. I haven't really been shooting this whole summer, besides from Europe and when I got back, been busy with family and friends stuff, but I feel like it's August, I'm back on the streets, and the love is coming back. I just can't wait to shoot more after this video, so. so you're not shooting, like, you, you never thought about going digital at all in the past three months? Well, the price didn't dramatically increase, so it looks like I'm about to stay right here, but. What is the price that, you, that will make you reconsider your format and how you're shooting? $30 a roll. Yeah, that's my minimum. And if it was anything like above 25-ish, then I'll work it out. I'll work it out. Maybe shooting just luxury reasons <laughs> for delicacy. Conway, what about you? What's your relationship with, with film and film photography right now? Uh, well, I'm shooting film today, uh, Portra 800. Uh, to be honest, I haven't been uh, shooting uh, film a lot this summer, even this year. So I've been uh, doing uh, a lot of monochrome like digital, uh, so I am doing hybrid. Uh, so it's drastically probably like at least like 80, 40. Uh, how is, so how has that ratio kind of changed in the past, like from what you were doing last year? Uh, so digital was pretty much 0%. Is that an economic thing? It's pretty much that and the fact that um, I guess also just trying to change up a little bit of the workflow. Um, so I do have intentional, I guess, reasons why, meaning that for black and white, I like digital, but for color, I, I still like color film. Um, so yeah, that's that's where the split is. Yeah. All right, thank you, man, appreciate it. Yeah, of course.
Ugh. Ugh. Hey, so you've probably seen, if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen that I've been using a GR3, this guy, recently for the past couple weeks. Um, and then this video comes out, you're like, what's going on? Is Paul switching to digital? And no, not completely. Um, I didn't buy this for the purpose of um, switching or taking away from my film photography. Uh, I, I bought this pretty soon after my walkie talkie with Aaron Berger. Um, I, honestly, I was like, I saw him the way that he shot it and how free and how uh, flowy he was when out shooting. And I was like, let's give it a shot. Um, talked to Dustin, cause he recently bought it. And then <laughs> I actually bought this off of Dustin. So this is mine now. Um, I have been using it on the streets for the past three weeks uh, here and there. And the way that I'm using it, isn't to replace my Leica M6. Uh, I'm using it to supplement it, and this is how. Uh, so on, a, on any regular day, I'll go out as normal with my Leica, um, warm up with my Leica, shoot normally on film. Uh, I'll, I'll go in and um, shoot until I hit a flow state, till I'm quote unquote in the zone. And then when I hit that zone, uh, I, I try to be very self-aware. So then as soon as I feel myself coming out of that zone, uh, past that peak, I'll whip out this bo this bad boy and um, keep snapping away freely without with very little thought. Uh, and what that does is that kind of keeps me in that flow state a little bit longer. From there, I can switch back to the Leica M6 and keep taking photos um, with the method of my choice, to be honest. Like, I'd rather take photos with this, uh, but, you know, as, as you come down from the flow state, you kind of slow down, your brain gets kind of tired. But with this method, I feel like there's been a couple of days where I stayed in that flow state for, like, like an entire evening. Yeah, that, that's how I've been using it. I, it hasn't really affected the number of rolls that I've shot, the number of photos that I've shot with my Leica. Um, maybe there were some photos that... I wish I would have taken with my Leica that I took with the GR3, but I think the idea is that I took them. And if I would have stayed just shooting the Leica, then maybe I wouldn't have because I would have, you know, fallen off that cliff from my flow state so fast. Uh, whereas, you know, keeping this out and just snapping away kept me in it. Maybe that's wrong. Who knows? But I've been enjoying it. It's been real fun. It's just a fun camera to use, you know? Um, if you ever use one of these, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, I suggest give it a try. Even if you shoot film, it's fun. And that's really what all of this is about, right? Having fun. So, yep, that's my current relationship with film photography. It hasn't changed, but I have, I have added this as a supplement to my overall photography, uh, which doesn't affect the film photography aspect of it. Does that make sense? No? Makes sense to me. Anyways, what about you? Let me know in the comments, leave a comment to let me know what your current relationship is with film photography. If you still shoot it, if you slow down shooting it, if you just picked it up and looking forward to reading all of them and we'll catch you guys next time. Subscribe to this channel, hit that like button and I already said leave a comment. So um, till next time, peace. Now when they see us in the streets, all they want to do is take pics, and I'm like, oh.